one of the great things about being a book editor is we get to fall in love all the time. Um, maybe it's true of librarians, I don't know. Um, we get to fall in love with writers and uh, I never know when I get up in the morning if I'm gonna fall in love with that writer and that book that just came in the mail. For me, with Afia, uh, it was love at first sight. When I read the first few pages of Conjure Women, um, it took my breath away. It was the beauty of her writing. And then, of course, I fell in love with the background, the uh, years right before and after the Civil War, uh, and with her two wonderful main characters, uh, the mother, who's way too smart, Miss May Bell, and her daughter, Rue, who both become and are conjure women. So pretty soon, a lot of other people fell in love with Afia uh, and with her book. Um, I think maybe Nell Freudenberger says it very well. She says, if you are grieving for Toni Morrison, Afia Atakara is the young writer to read now. And here she is. Hello, thank you so much, Kate. I love you too. <laughs> um, I'm so happy to be here today in front of the librarians, my favorite people. Um, but I do have a confession to make, and I promise it's not about overdue library books, although <laughs> we can talk about that. But, um, so to understand my confession, we have to go back a little ways, and I will tell you about my upbringing. Um, I grew up in England uh, for a few years, but we moved to New Jersey. Uh, and while I was there, I developed a love for the library. And I'm sure you've all encountered this type of kid that comes up with like a stack of books, like it's a strong man competition, throws them down, is like, check them all out, I want them all. I, I was that kid, for sure. And um, I was a latchkey kid. My parents were immigrants from West Africa. And they encouraged education, but they didn't have the opportunity to focus on it as much as they wanted to. So the library was sort of this perfect place where they could dump me and know that I was, <laughs> I was getting up to good things. I was reading. Um, and we got by, but we didn't have a lot of money, so there wasn't room to buy books, right? So being able to get them for free and take them home and, and sit there and open them up, that was life-changing for me. And over, over the years, it sort of became this thing where they would tricked me into doing things by telling me we'd go to the library, right? Like, if you eat your vegetables, you can go to the library. Oh, you got an A on the test. Like, we'll celebrate by going to the library. And, and it, it worked on me. <laughs> uh, for me, the library was an ultimate treat. It was a second home. And it was a place that I could lose myself if I had to. It was an escape. And I, for one, truly believed that it was a magical place. It wasn't until I was about five years old, six years old, and I remember it very vid vividly that I realized that books were written by people, like real human adults, mm -hmm. and I could grow up and be one. And as soon as I realized that, I vowed that I would be a, a writer. And figuring that out and sticking to my vow, this is where the confession comes into play. I went down to my local library in New Jersey, and at this point I was probably seven or eight, and I had figured out the Dewey Decimal System and the card catalog, and I was a beast at finding anything on the shelf, almost as, almost as good as what I um, So I figured out where my book would be on the shelf, and I took a pen and dug my initials <laughs> into the shelf um, for all time, <laughs> believing that books didn't move and that there wasn't weeding or shifting. Um, but I would actually go on to work at that very same library, and I, I eventually figured out that books and new acquisitions happen. Uh, and at some point, we did get in the budget new shelves, but for an embarrassingly long time, my initials were in those shelves, and I saw them every day. So like I said, I worked at the library for 10 years. I started as a page, which is, uh, I was like 16, we shelved books, that's what we called it. 
Um, and then I worked up my way to senior library assistant in the periodicals department, where I started to have these horrible nightmares of like the automatic doors like closing on me, like <laughs> recurring nightmares. But I also had these letters haunting me and reminding me of my promise that I wanted to be a writer. And so Conjure Women, my book, is me finally making good on that promise. It's my debut novel. And I'm so excited to share it with you guys. Um, after leaving the library, I attended the MFA program right here in NYC at Columbia. And it wasn't until about the last semester of my senior year there, my final semester there, that I came onto the story that I knew was the one I was gonna write. And I was sort of unsure, I was a little frustrated. I was taking a break from the writing and I was watching YouTube. <laughs> and as one does at 3 a.m., I started watching weird medical videos. So I a habit of mine. Like, other people do that, right? Okay. Whatever. <laughs> so I, I came upon this video and it was about a, it had this sort of clickbaity title. It was about a home birth in this Brooklyn brownstone, like you know the type, like beautiful plants everywhere. And this very tasteful naked couple <laughs> is sitting in what looked to me like a kiddie pool, to my untrained eyes. Um, and they're having a home birth. And the title is, what happens at this water birth will shock and surprise you. And there's this like super modern doula there and she's wearing all these beads and she's helping the mother who's in labor. And the mother gives one final push and the baby comes out and it's encased in its amniotic sac. Um, and the doula just, she's cool with it. She just slits it right open. The baby comes out squalling. And that for me was, I knew the very first scene that I wanted to write in my story. I began to think about how babies are born every day throughout time, and yet every day it's a miracle. And so that was sort of the crux I wanted Conjure Women to live in, the every day, the mundane, and the miraculous. Um, so going forward, that first scene became one of the early scenes in the book. Uh, and I'm very glad that Kate let me keep this scene, by the way. <laughs> it was one of the initial scenes, and it follows Rue, um, a young midwife. She's very reluctant to become a midwife, and yet she's in this crucial spot in her community where she is the only healer um, and she births a baby with black eyes and frightening white skin. And she doesn't live in the time that we live in. She can't just Google it and figure out what is this baby that's encased in its call. Um, so she has to come up with an explanation for the people of the town that she lives in, which is in the South. It's the post-Civil War and she lives amongst the ruins of an old plantation and she's administering to these recently freed slaves in this isolated community, and this uncanny child to them is a bad omen. And her powers, her skills of healing, begin to create fears of witchcraft. And she has no way to dispel them. And the main action of the novel takes place during the Reconstruction era, um, which is this really interesting 10-year period that I feel like we don't talk about a lot in history right after the Civil War, as I said, where our country was divided and decimated. There were, the North had won, the South had lost, and everyone couldn't get over what had happened in the country, which I think we all find familiar. Um, at this time, African Americans were thrust into freedom. They could vote, they could hold office, and they did so, but they also had to define what freedom meant for them. As for the white sovereign owners, sovereign plant owners, their wealth, their homes, their cultures were decimated. And so they had to think of a new way to live as well. So the book centers on the Reconstruction era, but it also goes back in time to figure out how did we get to this point. And through a braided narrative, it looks at slavery and the Reconstruction era, focusing in the past on Miss Maybell, as Kate mentioned, uh, Rue's mother, who was also a widow, midwife and uh, a slave and a mysterious healing woman. And Rue sort of lives in her shadow, right? She, she doesn't want to be a midwife, but her mother was an excellent one. Um, there's also Verena, who is the daughter of the plantation owner and Rue's sort of only friend, and yet Verena is white, Rue is black, and their relationship is fraught. 
So the book is very much about these fraught relationships, right? In the United States at that time, among friends and between a mother and a daughter. And I mentioned my mother earlier, as I said, she was from West Africa. She worked very hard. She worked as a home health aide. And as I said, she would drop me off at the library and the librarians became my babysitters. So thank you librarians for that. But when she didn't have the opportunity to do that, she would sometimes take me with her to work. And I would be there um, in the homes of these people, sick, sometimes elderly, sometimes infirm, sometimes dying. And I sat there, you know, with my library books, but I also observed her and the way she was treated by these people and the way she treated them. And I think I learned a lot about empathy and kindness and also the ways that people view each other. And so that figures largely into Conjure Women. Rue also learns from her mother the way the world is. And from that, she must decide in the present action what to do and how to solve the problem of this mysterious child. So that's what I like to call the birth story of Conjure Women. And as you know, this is my debut novel, my first book. And it's still absolutely incredible to me that it exists, not just in my mind, but in the world for you all to enjoy. And so I hope that you get the chance to read it. I hope that it makes it onto your shelves without me having to carve my name into each one. <laughs> um, and if you enjoy it, I hope that you share it with your patrons. And it lives in the stacks where I always kind of hoped that I would live. So thank you.